Welcome back to Just Scribble. You guys are never, ever, ever going to be able to guess what is in this box from VDS. This box contains my newest VDS that arrived today, and it is not a B6, and it is not an A5, it is not a passport, it's not even a codex. There is a ring planner inside of this box. I know, y'all are probably shocked. I'm a little bit shocked too, but I'm gonna explain. But first we're gonna check it out because I'm really, really, really excited for this. I want to see it, I want to feel it, and all of the things. So as with always, when you get a Vanderspec, you get this little card that says, hi, I am your new VDS planner. It says Vanderspec Leather Goods. And it has their logo and their website on the back. And then it comes packaged in a nice black box. And in here, I have my flyleaf and my ring planner. So I did order this planner from their ready to ship section. And I chose to do that for a couple of reasons. One is because it would come very, very fast. So their ready to ship section does ship in five days. And so I knew it would get to me quickly and I was just kind of anxious to get this and to check it out in person. Another reason is because this is in their touch me line, which I've never owned and I wanted to check it out and try something from their touch me line. It is a full grain Buffalo leather. And I do know that I like Buffalo leather from other brands that I've bought from. And so I thought it would be something that I would like but I thought it would be fun to check it out. Another reason was because this would be cheaper because if I didn't buy from their ready to ship section I knew that I would do some things to customize it just things that I really really like and that would add to the price of the cover and since this is a new to me size and also a style a ring planner that I don't normally buy I didn't want to invest a whole bunch of money from the start and then the other reason is because I don't actually know what I would want customized. I really wanted to try it out in kind of the basic default setup. And then if I do like this and if it does work, then later I could go back and I could order a custom in a leather that I really, really want and love, like the Janet Leather Undyed and I could adjust ring size, I could adjust dimensions and all of the things. So those are kind of the reasons that I ordered this from their ready to ship. So what I ordered is their Touch Me Alizon. And I watched so many videos and looked at so many Instagram posts to try to decide what color of Touch Me Leather I wanted. Oh, this feels really, really nice. This is so totally new to me. It's a new leather, it's a new color. But I watched tons of videos and looked at tons of Instagram posts before I decided on a color. I was really toying between three colors. So I was deciding between the Alizon, which is this one, which is kind of a pinkier beige color. It kind of reminds me of the Velvet Sand, but a little bit lighter. And so I was deciding between that, the Parm, which is like a really soft pink color, and Poussière, I don't know how you say that, but it's also sort of a beigey color, but it's more on the gray toned taupey brown shades instead of like a pinky taupe. And so after looking at all the videos and all of the pictures, I decided that I wanted to try this. And I actually had trouble finding really good videos and pictures on what this color truly looked like. And so I also just really wanted to check out for myself and be able to share it with you guys. Against the black, it looks like that. And then if you put it against the beige, it kind of looks like that. And I will definitely take pictures in natural light outside and share those on Instagram as well. And I'll try to remember to make a note to share it in the community tab here. But that's the color that I ordered. So this is the Touch Me Leather. This is the Flyleaf. This is the only thing that I like added on and did differently. I paid to have this. I thought I might want one and I thought it would be better to order it with the planner than to go back and order it later. So I would save on shipping. And like I said, this was ready to ship. So it shipped in five days. It actually shipped on the fifth day. So it shipped on Friday and it was here today on Monday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So four days, two of which were weekend days, and it got to San Antonio, Texas from Vanderspeck. So the shipping was really, really fast, both the processing time on their end and then also the shipping through FedEx. But this is my planner and I'm really excited and nervous and anxious. And y'all probably think I'm absolutely crazy because I am not normally a ring planner person, but I do have a reason for this. 
and I will explain that to you, but first I want to check it out. Oh, it's so soft. Okay, let's take off the plastic. This is probably going to be a multi-part video. Well, not necessarily like multi-part back to back to back, but I am not setting this up on this video, so I am going to be doing another video in the future where we will walk through the setup. But there is the snap, and let's take out the little piece of like foam. Oh, it's so soft. So, so very soft. Like super soft and pliable and this leather is like a workhorse not going to scratch up it's not going to patina and one of the reasons that i decided that i did want to just go ahead and buy this leather is because i wanted to feel it and check it out for myself oh look at those pockets but the other reason is because this doesn't work out and i decide that i'm not going to use it as a planner which is what we're going to talk about i have a different plan for this like a backup plan so that i would still be using it and so I wanted the more durable leather for that purpose. So that's kind of why I decided that I was going to go this route. So let's check it out first. Then I'm gonna talk about why I decided to go with a Vanderspeck instead of something else. Then we'll talk about what my plan is, why I bought one to start with. So here is my ring planner. It has some nice veining there. And then this front piece is really, really smooth. I didn't put anything in the notes. I didn't ask for any particular, um, for any particular texture in the leather or anything else. I do normally like, like wrinkles and a lot of veining, but because this is a leather that I'm not familiar with, I really wanted to just see what came to me and see how it looked. And it feels amazing. So this is the default layout, like this is the ready to ship layout with no customization. Let me take this off. So what you get is you automatically get two pen loops, which I love because I like having two pen loops, but they are the default size, so they're not customized. Whereas in my other planners that I had customized, I changed the pen loop size. So they're the default pen loop size. They point out, which is my preference, there's a zipper pocket here. I'm kind of indifferent about the zipper pocket. I don't know that I would ever really use it, but it's there. Then you have a slip pocket there. You have this little pocket here. You have a secretarial pocket there. You have a secretarial pocket there. You have these little card slots over here, and then it comes with a big back pocket. That's actually something that somehow I missed in the listings. I'm not really sure how I missed that, but I didn't actually realize that it was going to have a big back pocket. I'm not usually actually a fan of big back pockets, but in this, because there's no stiffener or anything in the Touch Me Ready to Ship, it just has the like frame Bontex. There's no stiffener or anything like that. I don't mind the back pocket because it's really, really slim and really, really soft. And you can actually still feel the rings there. And that's kind of what I like. Part of the reason I don't like a back pocket is because it causes bulk and it makes the planner even thicker and chunkier. But because this leather is really, really thin and there's no like stiffener or added um, stability inside there, it doesn't really bulk up in the back. And maybe I'll end up liking the back pocket. If I don't, I just don't have to use it. I will say when I have customized my other two VDSs, I did get a back pocket in my passport because I use it as a wallet. When I'm carrying it, I use it as a wallet. And so I wanted the back pocket for cash. And when I did that customization, I had this like a uh, liner flipped so it was the felt side is what you felt and i actually prefer that to this sort of like faux leather finish so if i were to customize one and decide i wanted a back pocket i would definitely flip that and that would be the same for the interior on these secretarial pockets i would have them flipped that's just a personal preference it does come with kraus rings so you can see that there. I did opt for the silver rings. You got to choose if you wanted silver or gold and I went with silver, I just prefer silver and I think the silver looks really pretty with this leather. And then you got to choose the diameter of your rings. So I chose 25 millimeters because I don't plan on or want to have this to be super, super chunky. However, it's been years since I used a ring planner as my actual planner. I've been using my plotters, but they have 10 millimeter rings, so they're really, really, really skinny. And I just set up my work reference binder, but that just stays at work. So the 
ring diameter doesn't matter as much but for on the go and like carrying it i didn't really want it to be super chunky so i went with the 25 millimeter rings because i figured that that would be kind of my base point and then if i decide that i need more space for what i want to use it for then if i got a custom in the future i could just get larger rings so i did get the 25 millimeter silver rings it does come with two pen loops it only comes with one popper and the ch the strap isn't very very chunky like if i was to customize i would get like the super chunky a4 clasp on here but it's not super thin either so i like that because i don't like a really skinny clasp if i had one customized i would get a second popper because that's something that i do like as well but i wanted to just kind of try it out the way it is so this is my new cover and it feels so good i'm so excited it feels so good so let's talk about uh, what should we start with? First, let's start with why I bought a VDS as this sort of, uh, it's kind of a test, and why I didn't buy something less expensive. So there's a couple reasons why I decided to go with a VDS. One is that the profile of the VDS is just slimmer. Like even with this back pocket, because of the design of this and because there's no um, bond text or stiffener or anything like that, it's a slimmer planner. It's not quite so big and bulky. So part of the reason is because of that. Part of the reason is because I wanted to buy a six size. Did I even mention that? I don't I'm like all over the place because I'm really excited about this and I really wanted to open it up and check it out. This is an A6 ring planner from Vanderspeck. So it is a VDS A6, also known as Senior. So this is A6 size. There aren't as many A6 size covers, ring planner covers. And in some brands, they call things A6, but they really aren't A6, they're personal. So I knew that if I was going to get an A6 cover, I really only had a few options to go to to buy one where I knew it was gonna be a true A6 ring planner. So my choices were really Gilio, Vanderspeck, Moterm, and Ara Estelle. And I actually got an Ara Estelle recently, I'm gonna share that in a minute. I got an Aristal pocket size recently that was free. It came free with my order because I had spent $100. So I knew that the Aristal based on that pocket ring cover and then also based on a week's cover that I have from Aristal that it was gonna be too big and chunky. Like just the, the faux leather that they use and their design, it was gonna be a lot chunkier and that wasn't what I wanted. So Aristal was already off the table. Gilio to me is really, really overpriced. I have a couple of Gilios. One I snagged from someone at a really good deal off of Macari, someone that I knew through the planner community. And the other one I got at 50% off. And even at 50% off, I think that it's too high of a cost for the quality that you get. And so for me, justifying the cost of the Gilio, knowing that the leather doesn't feel as lush to me and as high quality to me as VDS, and the craftsmanship is not as high quality to me as VDS, I wasn't gonna go with Gilio. So that really left Moterm and the Moterms are kind of chunky and big and I wasn't really in love with any of the leather options either and I really didn't want it to have a stiffener or anything in it. So that left VDS. This is obviously more expensive than buying a Moterm but I knew that if I bought something that was less expensive like the Aura Estelle or the Moterm I'd still be paying quite a bit of money for it. Not quite as expensive as this but it's not like it's $25 and so I was gonna be spending quite a bit of money for something that wasn't really what I wanted and so then I would either be wishing that I had bought this or I would go ahead very shortly thereafter and go and buy a VDS and that seemed silly to me that seemed like a waste I knew that if this is really where I was gonna want to be and this was the brand I was gonna want then it was best for me financially to just go ahead and buy the ready to ship that was a little less expensive than doing a custom I could get it quickly and it would be what I wanted already this also has the double pen loops that I like and the no stiffener and all the other things so that's the explanation of why I decided to jump straight to VDS, which is a pricier planner cover. So that's why I picked VDS. That's my pretty cover that I'm just really, oh, it feels so good. I'm just really excited about that. So the next thing I thought I would do before I talk to you about 
what I plan to use this for was just to do a little size comparison because that is the other thing that I did. Before I decided that I was gonna go down this rabbit hole of an A6 ring planner, I also watched a ton of videos on ring planner size comparisons to try to get an idea of what this would feel like in my hand, how it would compare to other how it would compare to some of my other planner covers, if this would be too big for me and more than I wanted, or if it would be kind of the right size. And so I thought after watching all those videos that it would be a really good size for me. And so I decided that I was going to try it. And so far, at least the feel of it, I like it. So I'm excited. So this is an A6 ring planner, which means that your inserts are A6 size, which means the planner cover has to be bigger than A6 size, primarily to accommodate for your rings. So this is an A6 folio from Chic Sparrow. And so I thought I would just show you guys what an A6 folio comparison looks like. This is their original folio design, so it's a little different than their current design, but I thought I would show you the size difference there so you guys could kind of see maybe i should turn it that way so you guys could kind of see and obviously this is a folio so it just has one planner and it has a take a note planner in it and this is going to be a lot thicker because it's got the 25 millimeter rings and then when you lay it on top that's kind of your size difference so it is bigger obviously because really this could almost fit inside there, right? If I took this planner, that's basically the size of the fly leaf. And so that's kind of what it would look like. So because of the rings and everything, this is bigger. So that's a comparison to an A6 folio. This is the pocket Aura Estelle that I received for free. I didn't need this at all, but it was free. So since it was free, I went ahead and got it because I have inserts, Tomoe River paper inserts from Sterling Ink. And I'm using this to just store the inserts that I'm not using, like the blank pages, so they don't get all messed up. And so that's literally all I'm using this for is storage because it was free and I didn't really have any need for it but I thought it would be a nice way to store the inserts and I can stick them on my shelf. But this is their, I think it's called Cloud, but it has a zipper pocket and it has card pockets and it has a pen loop, not the kind that I like because it points in. It has straps, I think you can make it into a purse or something like that. And then it has this like massive fold over thing, which is not my thing. And then it has this big back pocket in the back. And I think that their non-fold over pocket ones are a little bit smaller than this just because that adds a little bit of extra bulk. But the actual like height and everything like that is a normal pocket planner. So I just thought I would show you that the A6 is obviously bigger, but it's not too terribly much bigger. And actually this one feels smaller in my hand than this one because this leather is just so thick. There's just so much going on behind the ring mechanism and this is much more slim. So that's kind of what they look like next to each other. This is personal rings. So this is a Filofax um, Domino, I think is what it's called. It's their ring planner that's got an elastic closure. And I bought this on like super, super, super sale on Amazon. It was one of those things, you know, where it pops up in your cart and it's just super, super cheap. And I bought this because it's where I'm putting my used inserts from my plotter that I'm using right now, my Bible size plotter. So when I change out my inserts for the month, I put the used ones in here until I'm ready to throw them away. And then I'm also keeping my extra Tamoy River paper from Sterling Ink that's in personal size in here and some extra dividers that I had. And so I thought I would show you the personal size. So the A6 is a little bit wider, but it's shorter. So it feels slightly more portable to me, but also I just really like the page shape better, the A6 page shape over the personal. I am liking my plotter a lot, but I do prefer the A6 shape. So that's kind of the size comparison there. 
So the A6 ring planner isn't really that much bigger or smaller than a personal. They're kind of the same size, just different. This one is a little taller and a little skinnier. This one is a little wider and a little shorter, but in my bag, they're, they're kind of the same. This will fit a little differently because it's wider, but not too terribly much different. All right, so this is my plotter. Well, this is actually a woozy. This is not a plotter because I moved into my woozy, but this is what I'm using for social media planning on the go right now. I have these tabs from Gracie Edits in it. I really, really like this thing. And this is kind of what's gotten me intrigued in trying rings for on the go because I've really been enjoying this. Now, part of the reason I've been enjoying this is because it's so slim and it slips into my bags really well, but also I'm liking the like the, the fact that I use these inserts and then I keep them until I've transferred the information where it needs to go and then I throw them away. So it's temporary, I guess, for lack of a better word. And so I'm really enjoying that, which is kind of what led me to this idea. But this is my Bible size compared to the A6. Obviously the Bible size plotters, which is the same size as this and Woozy are way smaller because this is 10 millimeter, like, I mean, teeny tiny itty bitty rings 10 millimeter rings and this is 25 but they are actually basically the same height but this is obviously wider because the paper that goes in it is wider and the rings are quite a bit bigger and then obviously it is thicker because 25 millimeter versus 10 millimeter and then my last size comparison is comparing it against my b6 so this is a cover from Smart Fee. I do have a review on one of their Hobonichi Weeks covers here on my channel. And so you can see that width-wise, they're about the same. This is a B6 cover that holds like your common planner or your Stology or something like that. And so width-wise, this A6 ring planner and this B6 planner are about the same, but the A6 is shorter and the A6 is a little bit chunkier, but I also only have one uh, book in here. I just have my Night Owl in here. When I have two in here, when I have Astology in here too, it gets a little bit thicker. But that's the kind of size comparison against my B6 planner and my new A6 rings. Okay, so now the really important part, well actually the really important part was me opening this up and touching this leather and checking it out and I'm so excited. I'm really actually very happy for this. I, even if this doesn't work for what I'm gonna like test out for and what I'm kind of planning for it, I know that I'm gonna like this cover for my alternate purpose. So the reason that I got this planner or what kind of put me on the path to this planner or this cover is that I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do in 2024. And I know that probably seems a little bit crazy, but I already have my 2024, like personal everything, catch all, whatever you want to call it, planner already set. I am going to be using a Wonderland 222 A5 Unstacked Vertical Planner in 2024 and I am so very excited for it. I used the Wonderland for um, like seven months of last year. I moved into that, I think May of last year until the end of the year. This year I've been in my common planner and then I've been using the Night Owl as I've been testing it because I was reviewing it. And I really love B6 size. I love the portability of B6 size. I do really love my common planner, but there's some changes to the common planner for 2024 that I'm not super excited about. Well, it's really just one change. It's where the time is on the timeline, on the vertical spread, where that is. But really the reason that I'm moving back to Wonderland 222 is because there's functionality in Wonderland 222 that I really love and need for my everything planner. I really love their quarterly planning pages. I really love the month review and the month overview. I love the bundled months and the weeks, and I love the habit tracker section. And I have dedicated purposes and uses for those sections, and they just make that planner really, really functional for me. And it's really a good fit for my everything planner. 
However, it is A5 size and last year I used it in A5 size and I carried it with me everywhere, but it's big. It's a lot to carry with me. And so I decided that for 2024, that is going to be my everything planner, but I'm not going to carry it with me. It's going to stay at home open to the week that I'm on or the day that I'm on and it, I'm going to use it and I'm going to set it up and I'm going to use it, but it's going to be kind of a combination of my everything, very functional planner and also my ability to journal and memory plan kind of all in one. And so it's going to stay home. And so I need something to take with me because I do work in the office every day of the week. And then we have, you know, school activities and kiddo activities and all the things. And so I need a planner that goes with me all the time. So a sort of extension planner or on the go planner or companion planner, whatever you wanna call it. And I have ordered a planner for that purpose from Sterling Inc. I have pre-ordered it. I had thought that I would use either their Weeks, which is the N2 or their Standard, which is the N1 size. And that would be my on the go kind of extension planner. And then I would pair with that two of her passport planners, one for health and wellness and one for social media. And so I would carry this little stack and I did share that in my recent passport, Sojourner passport unboxing video. So that was kind of my plan. But the more I was thinking about it, the more I realized that that may not be the best answer. It would completely work and I could completely do it. But there's two real reasons why it may not be the best answer for my sort of extension on the go planner. The first being that they're bound books and I know myself and I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis and effort into using them and making them nice. And I don't want that on the go extension planner to take away from the home planner and the journaling and the memory keeping and all of the functionality of the Wonderland 222. I really want that Wonderland 222 to be my everything. And this other thing that I'm carrying with me is really just so that I don't forget what I need to do during the day. And so I have a place to make lists and write down random things from my brain and all of the things. And so, I think that if I had something that was a little bit more temporary, so something that was just throw it in there, messy, and then once I came home and transferred it at the end of the day or at the end of the week or at the end of the month, I could then trash the pages. And so I wouldn't be keeping them. So if it was a ring or a discount planner, I wouldn't put so much emphasis on kind of the permanence of that on the go extension planner, if that makes sense. So that was one of the reasons. And the other reason is that as much as I love the passports and I may still end up using them, that's still separate things because I don't think that I can fit everything that I need to in that week size planner. And I think the standard is just not really my favorite size. I like it, but I don't know that I would wanna be in it as my on the go planner. Um, and so, I don't know if I could fit everything for all of our plans that I need when I'm out and about and all of my lists and all of my ideas and all of the brain dumping and all the things plus the stuff for my channel and the website I'm starting and all the things for my brand plus health and wellness all into that week's and so I would need these two passports to go with it. But then I have three things that I have to keep up with on the go. And I think that it would be better if I simplified by having something where they were all together and I only had to carry one thing with me, open up one thing, keep it open like at my desk at work, and I could update my wellness, my social media, our personal, my brain dumps, my lists, all the things all in one place. So that's how I got here or so that's how I got to the idea of using rings or disc bound. And then although I do like disc bound planners, I don't really like them as much on the go. I don't like a lot of the cover options that I have as much for them. And I didn't really need the pages to be able to come in and out all the time. I just needed them to be in there for the month and then the ones that get used, take out and replace. And I also just kind of wanted to try my hand at ring planners again. I haven't used ring planners since 2017 or 2016, I was in a Kiki K. It's been years. And so other than my plotters, which I've really been enjoying, I haven't been in ring planners. And because I've been enjoying the plotters, I thought I might enjoy 
a bigger ring planner. Now this may be a complete fail and I may not enjoy this, but I really am liking holding this. So, so far it seems promising, but that's how I got to here. I, my intention is that this would be my sort of extension slash on the go planner. And what would be in here wouldn't be permanent. It would be pages that I wouldn't be archiving. I wouldn't be keeping. I would carry this with me and at night I could update my main planner. I could also do updates on the weekends and then every month when I did my month review and reset, I could clean out the ring planner of all of the things, make sure everything was in our long-term archived A5 Wonderland 222 and then trash the inserts. I could still use stickers and washi in here, but I wouldn't have to. I would be less focused on um, keeping it nice and keeping it ready to archive because it would be really something that I'd be trashing the inserts at the end of the day. Um, but I think being able to combine all of those things into one thing when I'm out and about and one thing when I'm at work will be good. I think my wellness will fall to the wayside less if it was all together. And right now, the way it works in my common planner, I don't have space for all of that in here. I can fit some of it, but I don't have enough space. And so if I was really just using a month at a time in here, I think I could make the space to be able to do all of that. And then I could have my home one be my A5. That's kind of the plan. So that's how I got to rings and then how I got to A6. Um, well, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a multi thing also. I knew it wouldn't be pocket. It's way too small. Like these inserts are way too small. This would not be enough space for me to do everything I need to do on the go. It's just not enough space. And I also know that I wouldn't be comfortable in this. This is fine for lists writing down quotes, that kind of thing, but I don't want to plan in this small on the go and while I'm at work and things like that. So I knew that was out. And then I'm not really a huge fan of the shape of personal. It works okay, but it's not my ideal paper shape. I much prefer this shape that's a little bit more square and I didn't want to go anything bigger than this. So as much as I love B6, I did not want a B6 ring planner because that would be way bigger than my B6 common planner. That would be pretty much a B6 ring planner is pretty much the same size as my Wonderland 222A5 will be. And so I didn't want to lug that around. So it really seemed like I would either need to go with pocket wide or I would need to go with A6. And I really like the shape of an A6 paper. So I went with A6. And there are actually a lot of shops that have A6 size inserts. There's a lot of freebies in A6 size inserts and I'll be using a lot of freebies in this planner. There's also shops that make tabs and dividers and all those kinds of things. And so it's easy, pretty easy to find accessories for this. And I don't need a ton of accessories. The other reason is because one of the videos that I watched and one of the Instagram that I followed the most that uses a six ring bound is plan with B really really love her channel really love like her planning style just how authentic and functional she is and she carries a stylogy in the back of her a six ring planner for just like the messy sort of brain dump stuff that doesn't really need to be on an insert and so that was the other thing that led me to a six size is that I really love bound books obviously that's where I've been um, or what I've been using for planners for years now and so I could in theory based on her video I could tuck this stylogy in the back the pen loop is still usable it doesn't interfere it doesn't interfere with the rings. And so I can have inserts in here and I can have a stylogy and I adore stylogy. I kind of miss being in my stylogy. And so it would kind of give me my stylogy back that I want and love. It would give me a place for just like the really random stupid thoughts that I have that I want to write down. Or if I wanted to kind of shorthand journal so I didn't forget something and then I could journal about it later when I had time when I got home. And then I would have my inserts for travel tracking and to-do lists and our schedules and all that kind of thing. And so I could put that in there and it really wouldn't, this is a half year stylogy, by the way, 
and it wouldn't really add any bulk to this and I would kind of have the best of both worlds. I would have a little bound planner, I would have the ring planner. And so that is how I got to this. That's how I came upon deciding that Bander Spec would be the way that I tried out using rings, like for real rings, like a real ring planner for myself and why I decided to try rings and why I decided to go with A6 and why I decided to go with the Ready to Ship from Vanderspeck. I really love this color. I'm super excited about this. I wanted something that was neutral, that I wouldn't get tired of and that would work for all seasons. And this is a really good neutral that can go summer, spring, winter, fall. I think it's awesome. And I'm also kind of excited about decorating a ring planner, like changing it up for the seasons. I do sometimes tip things into my bookbound planners, but to be able to change up like the vellum or a photo or something and put a little pocket decor and just make it kind of cute and fun for the seasons kind of seems fun and creative and like a little bit of a creative outlet for me, something that I haven't done in a really long time. So that is my very long, very chatty and very off the wall, I bet you didn't guess that this is what was in that box, unboxing from VDS. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I will definitely get back with you. I love chatting with you guys in the comments. If you liked this share of my new A6 ring planner from VDS, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I post future videos. And don't forget to just scribble.